everyone. This video is on teaching the rear end awareness exercise. Before working on this exercise, I suggest you first work on the skill of your dog following a lure without licking or biting at it for dura duration so that you'll then be able to use the lure while working on this exercise without the dog getting frustrated or confused or trying to lick the treat out of your hand. Okay, so once you've taught your dog to follow the lure like this, and I have a video that I'll link in the description below, then you can start teaching your dog the concept of putting his feet up on a platform. What to use as a platform? To teach the dog the concept of keeping the front feet up on the platform, it's easier for most dogs if the platform is taller. If the platform is too thin, sometimes they won't know that they're standing on the platform and they can step off the platform as you're luring them around to do the exercise like Tug's doing there. So only after training is he um, able to use one this low. But for some dogs, uh, you wanna make sure that they're not too tall if they have issues um, and it's best to check with a physical therapist or a veterinarian if this exercise of stepping on a higher box is a good exercise for your dog. Tug, that looks so cute. I made my platforms out of plastic dishes that are really sturdy and I glued drawer liners that are non-slip on top of them. And I also use a fitness pad for humans with Velcro taped on the bottom so that it sticks in place on the carpet. Now the platform that you choose shouldn't um, restrict the dog's back leg movement so it should be small enough that they're able to put their paws up and turn around it but it should be big enough that uh, when the dog is standing squarely on it, that they're not having to keep their two front feet really close together to turn around because the platform's too small. That's gonna make it harder for the dog. The lower the platform, the easier it is for the dog to turn and take steps with their back legs um, because there's less weight on the back feet than on a taller platform. So the heavier your dog, the harder it will be the taller the platform, where if you have a very small light dog, it won't make as much a difference as a really heavy dog that's resting more weight on the back end. So if you notice your dog is not turning or budging at all, I suggest lowering the level of the platform. You can also practice teaching your dog to spin in a circle to give them an idea of the movement. Because if you've worked on standing still on a platform and now you want your dog to move, sometimes that can be confusing. So teaching the dog to spin in a circle, <laughs> oh, he's very excited. First, left and right, like that. And then when you bring out the platform after practicing going in a circle left and right like this, um, then your dog might be able to combine the two behaviors rather than think it's a static behavior where they have to stand in place. Now, if you do this early on with a puppy or a new dog that's not learned to spin in a circle left and right, I suggest being careful that the two behaviors don't get combined and your dog starts to spin in a circle like he's doing the rear end awareness exercise. If you see that starting to happen, you can use a large cone and get your dog to learn to spin around the cone so that they're doing a nice smooth movement to spin left and right rather than uh, both of the tricks getting combined into one. Teach step up on the platform. To teach paws up using luring, simply lure the dog over the platform and mark and reinforce the dog for putting his feet up on the platform. You might just click one foot going up at first. If the dog is struggling to want to put their feet up on something, you could first start out with a long platform and just call your dog and mark the moment that they step up onto whatever object it is in front of you. Or you could use the stairs of your house or a stair outside to begin this behavior if the dog is nervous to put their feet on something. Also choosing an object that is extremely stable and non-slip will be very helpful because if it's slippery or feels hollow to the dog, they might not wanna step up on it. So you lure the dog onto the platform, mark and feed multiple times for staying on the platform. Then use a release cue like free and mark and feed your dog for getting off of the platform. You can lure your dog off if he doesn't think to do it himself. Bye. 
If your dog is reliably getting up onto the platform when you lure your dog, you can add a cue. I like to use the cue paws up. So I'm going to release her and say free and place a treat down here. Then I'm going to say paws up and then lure her onto the platform, mark and feed multiple times, and then I'm going to say free. And if she gets off, I'm going to mark and feed. After a couple of training sessions, you can see if your dog might offer getting up onto the platform on his own when it's presented or put in front of you, and then you can mark and feed multiple times, say the release cue free, put a treat down, and then if your dog reliably gets onto the platform three times in a row like that, you can add your verbal cue without a hand signal. So I can say, after she's eaten the treat, pause up mark and feed. And if she didn't think to go and put her feet up, I could go back to luring her to put her feet back up on the platform like that. Good job. Mark a stutter step to the left and right. There are a couple things you can do to initially get the movement. One is luring the dog's head so that they look to the left and look to the right. And if it's very diff difficult for your dog or they've got a very bendy neck, you can practice going one way and then quickly switching to the other way and seeing if they might make a back foot movement. For some dogs, you might have to go down here to get them to think to turn. So holding the treat super low can be helpful for some dogs. So if they're really just not moving like this, you can go back to seeing if they can spin in a circle and then do paws up and then cue a little bit of that spin and see if you might get some rear end movement. Another trick that's really helpful is standing like this and then basically with the dog in front of you, you're pulling the treat behind your leg so the dog can't see it anymore and see if that might encourage your dog to look around the corner. So the dog gets up onto the platform, then you move in place so the platform is on your left or right side and then you pull the treat around the corner like that and see if the dog thinks to turn to find the treat. I don't suggest moving into the dog to get them to turn around uh, the platform because uh, maybe it's not very aversive to the dog, uh, the social pressure of you moving into their space, but uh, maybe it is. And also uh, what can happen is that then that becomes the cue to turn. So you always have to walk into your dog to get them to turn and it makes it harder to get the dog to turn into your space, if that makes sense. So uh, I know some people use that method and some dogs don't mind, but if you, had, if you were new to training and you couldn't read your dog's stress signals, walking into your dog to get them to turn uh, might backfire in that they won't be as confident doing the behavior as if you've uh, really reinforced their choice to want to do it for the food rather than to avoid something. Here's Wish, the dog from the previous clip as a nine-week-old puppy, in her first training lesson to turn to the left and the right. She'd already learned to put her paws up on the platform, and here you can see I'm trying the technique of moving her head to the left and the right, and I'm being very generous and marking just a tiny movement to the left and the right. Here you can see I've spent quite a lot of time trying to turn her in one direction, so I try the other, get a tiny stutter step, and then nothing in both directions, so I lure her in a circle and give her a treat for that so she doesn't get frustrated. But you can see she sat down as if to say that was too much. So you want to make sure to give enough treats that the dog stays in the game. The initial step of the dog taking a tiny stutter step to the left and right can be extremely hard for some dogs. So don't panic if you've done a couple of training sessions where your dog barely even moves to the left and right. So what it's going to look like at first is just something as minimal as that is very impressive to begin with. If your dog doesn't move at all, you want to make sure to be using a high rate of reinforcement because if they're just standing here and you keep trying to get them to move their back leg, they're trying. They don't know you're, they're supposed to be moving their back leg. So instead of just withholding treats, which can get them frustrated or want to quit completely, I suggest 
freeing the dog from the platform, free, give them a treat, and then practice luring them in a circle so that they're getting some reinforcement for trying things rather than them being very confused as to why they're not getting anything because they are moving their head to follow the treat or they think you're giving them a treat. It's a good idea to keep the training sessions short and fun, so perhaps just 10 repetitions or under 30 seconds of training and then move on to some other behavior so that the dog doesn't find it repetitive, boring, or confusing. Ask for more steps to the left and right. After getting a couple steps to the left and right like this, with the treat really close to your dog's face because you're turning their head like that, you can then start to hold the treat further away so the dog doesn't just learn to lick or try to get to your hand. So I suggest holding the treat out in front of your dog like this so their back is nice and straight. You want to make sure that when you start turning them that you don't turn too fast where they suddenly go into a C shape and their back is getting left behind. I'll try and do it with Halo, see if I can go too fast. He's really good, but do you see how his back is kind of in a C shape, like that? You don't want to do that. You want to go slow enough so that their back remains straight like that. And you want to make sure that you're not holding the treat too high up because that will make them arch their back. So I suggest a nice posture where the head is relaxed and the treat is in front of the dog like this, and you can practice moving your whole body in front of the dog like this, holding the treat. Good. To the left and to the right. Equally, you want to make sure to work equal sides of the dog's body uh, the same amount of repetitions. And that's why I like to work on both directions in the same training sessions. Even though it's usually easier for the dog to go in one direction, trainers can tend to get reinforced by that, so only work on that direction and then um, the other side isn't getting worked as much. You can work on turning to the left and the right in the front position, the left side, the right side, and while away from the handler. To initially get the behavior, you can stand in front of your dog and lure them around like this, but if you do it too long, that's all you get for that behavior, and you can't do things like getting the dog to flip into the heel position and the other position using a lure. I suggest playing games where you lure the dog with the dog in front of you like this, with the dog at your left side, luring the dog with your left hand like this, and on the right side when you switch the bait bag over, luring the dog like this. Awesome. And then also practice luring the dog with the left and the right hand while the dog is on the object. Now if you have a very long dog, this might be a little bit difficult and you could, <laughs> you could use a target stick to do this, but then you could teach the dog to free rotate um, without you having to be next to the dog where your body is part of the cue to move. Add a verbal cue to the movement. Once the dog is reliably turning, when you lure the dog or when you move your position, you can add cues. I like to add a cue for either direction as well as in the future teaching the dog front means to stay in front and line up no matter which uh, direction I, I go in. So uh, for me I like to use turn to go anti-clockwise and flip to go clockwise. Good. And then by teaching the different cues to mean one way or the other, you can then use them to train tricks. So um, for him, uh, to teach uh, back, backwards weaving, I can say turn and then back through. Awesome. And then for the other side, flip. Oh, he's already got it. Well, he's already learned that behavior. But I have a video on how to train backwards weaving in the description below using the rear end awareness to train it. Now there are many different ways to train dogs tricks and behaviors, but uh, if you're going to be using luring, this is just one way of doing it. Removing the lure. Once the dog is confidently turning, you can practice with an empty hand. So you pretend like you've got a treat in an empty hand. You turn the dog, mark, show them there's no treat, but that they still get a treat, and then you can go back to using a treat on the next turn and asking for more. So as soon as the treat disappears, 
the behavior gets easier for the dog. That way, the criteria is higher for working with no treat, but you've lowered the criteria of how long they have to do the behavior. I like to do that every time I remove the treat from my hand so the dog really enjoys when the treat disappears because everything gets way easier. Good. Another thing you can do is practice luring the dog and as soon as they're in the motion of moving, you can take the hand away and see if you might get a stutter step after you've removed the lure and then see if your dog might offer the same behavior at your side or in front of you or on your right side. Remove the platform and drastically reduce criteria. When you remove the platform, you can either make it lower at first or simply remove it after you've warmed the dog up with the exercise so they know what they were working on at the time. Put the platform over there and then drastically reduce criteria so you're just doing a stutter step again. And then what you can do is practice the concept of doing the behavior without the box, then bring the box back so that you can work on duration of the turning so that you don't end up with getting less behavior because you need to help teach the dog the concept of doing it without the platform. Good job. Initially, to get a dog to turn, you can turn the treat out like this and it makes their body turn, their, their rear end turn, but if you do that for too long, what can happen is as you turn or the dog backs around you, say they're doing um, backwards circles, they might turn their head out like that and arc their body in a C shape. So if you want the dog's head to be in a nice position when you're doing heel work, you can combine cues of touch and turn. Good. And taking little mini step, mini, mini steps at first. Touch and flip. Touch and flip. Good. Touch and flip. Good. Touch and flip. Good. I hope you found this tutorial helpful for your training. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kikopup by clicking the join button. See you later, guys.